Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and I apologize in advance if I sound a little nasally or congested in this video because I am nasally and congested, so um, bear with me. Um, what I'm hoping to do in this video, because I think the topic is a really, really cool topic, is just encourage uh, kind of an open dialogue amongst us. Um, as many of you probably know, I recently attended the Scarefest Horror and Paranormal Convention in Lexington, Kentucky. I did a video about it, a haul video, showed off all the, the signatures and stuff that I got. If you saw that video, you know that while there I got to meet George Romero. Um, was just honored to meet George Romero. To me, the guy's a living legend. He's an icon. He's a master of horror. I had the opportunity to meet him a few years ago at Scarefest. I think it was like 2010. For one reason or another, I didn't end up going and I kicked myself ever since they booked him this year. So I was just you know, gonna let nothing stand in my way to meet George uh, Romero. Um, not to get off on uh, too sidetracked here, but um, I, I'm sure as all of you probably know, Wes Craven recently passed away and uh, it really, his passing really put uh, things in perspective as far as our masters of horror. I'm talking about, you know, John Carpenter, George Romero, Toby Hooper, guys like that. And the fact that, you know, those guys are, you know, they're getting up in age. They're not going to be around forever. Uh, we even talked about it recently on our uh, Wes Craven tribute over on the Sausage Factory. Uh, and I think in the back of, of all of our minds, you know, we love those guys, we revere those guys, and in the back of our minds, we're holding out hope for one more really good John Carpenter movie, one more really good George Romero movie, etc., etc. You know, one more really good Wes Craven movie. Um, but, of course, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So, that really puts some things in perspective for me as far as, you know, our master's of horror. Um, after the convention was over, my girlfriend and I, we went to a restaurant and I was looking through the pictures on my phone and my girlfriend was like, you're really happy that you met George Romero, aren't you? I was like, I'm very, very happy that I met George Romero. And she's been with me at countless conventions and she said, you know, you really didn't say much to him. You didn't ask him anything. I, 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 I think you were starstruck. You were a little tongue-tied. I've never seen you get starstruck or tongue-tied meeting anybody at, at one of these shows. And she was right in that I really didn't ask him anything. I really didn't talk to him very much. Um, I didn't necessarily feel tongue-tied or, or really starstruck for that matter. Um, but, you know, the question was, well, what, what do you ask George Romero? What do I ask George Romero? And if you guys have been with my channel for any period of time and you've heard me talk about conventions, you know that I stress professionalism. You know, I want the celebrities who are there to be professional. But I think there's a level of professionalism that comes with being a fan as well. And by that I mean, you know, shake their hand, tell them you're a fan, tell them you appreciate their work, that it's an honor to meet them, you know, and... Just kind of move on. Don't be a blabbermouth. Don't, you know, <laughs> just fawn all over them. Don't fall on your knees and start kissing their feet. You know, there's a level of decorum to being a fan as well. And that's what I did with Romero. I shook his hand and I just said, you know, it's a pleasure and an honor to meet you. I really appreciate what you've done. I'm a lifelong fan. And, you know, he didn't ask for anything more. <laughs> I didn't feel like I needed to address uh anything more to be honest um just meeting him uh you know shaking his hand getting a picture with him having having him sign my dawn of the dead poster uh was enough and um shout out to my my buddy b jr he really summed up conventions perfectly he said you know all the you know the the, the stuff that you get signed the pictures all that stuff that's the stuff that you're really paying for but you you can't take any of that stuff with you Really, what you're paying for are the memories. What you're taking with you are the memories of meeting these people and of hanging out with, you know, like-minded people or running into people that you know and getting to hang out with them. That's really 
what you're taking with you are the memories. I thought that was a really smart thing uh, for him to say. So shout out to my buddy B Jr. And I totally agree. I totally agree. All this, all the signatures and photos, you know, all that's great. But really, it's the memories that you take with you. Um, but my girlfriend asked uh, the question of, okay, let's say you had 15 minutes, just you and George Romero, no lines, nobody else around. You've got George Romero, a captive audience, for 15 minutes. What are you going to ask him? Or what kind of conversation would you want to have with him? What topics would you want to discuss? And I couldn't think of anything right then and there. That was a great question. I had no answer. I had absolutely no answer. I mean, again, what am I going to ask George Romero? Hey, what was it like shooting down in those mines in Day of the Dead? I already know that answer. It was grueling. <laughs> it sucked. Uh, because I saw the making of documentary of Day of the Dead. Um, you know, it's kind of like when I met Don Coscarelli. I didn't ask him a thing about Phantasm Ra uh, Ravager. Because I knew that whole weekend he'd probably been asked time and time and time and time again about Phantasm Ravager. Hey, when's it coming out? What's it about? What's da 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 Instead, I talked to him about John Dies at the end, and he was actually kind of taken aback that I wasn't talking to him about Ravager. He actually brought up Ravager to me instead of me bringing it up to him. Um, but anyway, the, the more that I've thought about that question, what I, would, what I would really like to have asked George Romero is, you know, how have things changed over the decades as far as, you know, being a filmmaker and trying to get projects off the ground? Uh, or having the money to finance projects. Keep in mind, Night of the Living Dead came out in 68. So, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the 2000s, um, you know, the guy's been making films for a long time. How has that struggle changed decade to decade? You know, which decades were easier for horror, which decades were, were not so easy to get your, your, your films off the ground. And, you know, and, and what, what projects did you really want to work on, but you just couldn't get them off the ground for whatever reason? Uh, those are the things that I'd really like to talk about with, with George Romero. And those are the things that I'd really like to hear the other masters of horror talk about. When you see them in an interview... Typically, the questions are, how's, how's horror changed over the years? How's the genre changed over the years? And we all know that. We know it ebbs, it flows, there's good times for horror, there's lean times for horror. How has being a filmmaker changed over these decades? Uh, describe those ebbs and flows for me. Just, you know, con compare the 80s to the 90s. Uh, to, you know, the 2000s. Compare those from a filmmaking point of view. That's what I would want to talk to George Romero about. Those are, that's what I would like to hear Carpenter talk about. That's what I would have liked to have heard Wes Craven talk about. That's why I love the documentary, and I talk about it a lot on this channel, The American Nightmare, because they didn't just talk about the horror films that these guys did. They talked about uh, what was going on in the culture at the time that made these films possible and made them so, um, you know, made them mean what they meant at that time and, you know, how do they still, you know, why is it they're still just as powerful today, if not, in some cases, more powerful today? Um, those are the things that I would like to hear the masters of horror talk about, really. Not so much about just horror in, in general, just filmmaking. Um, but Jeff, if you haven't seen the American Nightmare documentary, by all means, go find it, search it out, watch it. I love that documentary. Absolutely love it. Um, but the question that I want to ask you guys today, and I'm I, I really looking forward to hearing your guys' responses in the comment section, or if you want to do a video response, please, by all means, just you know, send me a link of the video. If you had 15 minutes... With any celebrity, living or dead, any filmmaker, any director, writer, producer, editor, cinematographer, composer, any actor or actress, any author, living or dead, 15 minutes alone with them, they're a totally captive audience, 
what would you ask them or what kind of conversation would you want to have with them? What's the topic that you would like to discuss with them? Uh, please let me know in the comment section below. Living or dead, doesn't matter. Any celebrity, you've got 15 minutes alone with them. What do you want to talk to them about? What topic of discussion do you want to have? Uh, what question would you ask them? Can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this one. Um, as always, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. Take care, and until next time.